the Honourable Member for Nanaimo Ladysmith. Thank you, Mr. Pre Mr. Speaker. I appreciate this opportunity to discuss an important issue for Nanaimo Ladysmith. We have had an affordable housing crisis in my constituency. Our region has had a rapid rise in home prices and rental costs. The inevitable consequence of skyrocketing house prices in Vancouver and people moving to the island. It is also related to speculation and money laundering in BC real estate. As houses are sold, renovated and flipped, the price of rental stock has gone up all along, up along with the cost of buying homes. The most vulnerable people in our community, low-income renters, people with disabilities, low-income seniors and single-parent families are forced to move and are finding it increasingly difficult to find affordable places to rent. For the last three years, I ran employment skills training programs for young people with barriers to employment. Of the 60 people I had in my 15-week program, six experienced homelessness while they were in the program. The homes they were living in were sold or renovated and they couldn't find affordable places to live. I've heard similar stories from seniors. During the Nanaimo Ladysmith by-election, I heard it over and over again that people were struggling with the cost of housing. I met a young single mother with two children who lived in a campground last summer, found a place to live in the fall and had that home sold out from under her six months later. She has been dealing with a housing cycle like that for several years. There is no stability for her children. This is simply not acceptable in a country as wealthy as Canada. We have homeless people living in our parks and bushes around the community. There are people who are couch surfing homeless. And on any given evening, you can see people sleeping in cars in parking lots and on the street. Last summer, we had a major homeless camp in downtown Nanaimo with hundreds of people living there. Many of the people living in this camp were indigenous, and there were a number of people with mental health and addiction issues. A few of the homeless people who were desperate and in survival mode engaged in criminality. There was a growing community backlash to the camp. Homeless people were threatened and bottles thrown at them in the camp at night. Some were physically attacked in the streets. We had the soldiers of Odin marching in our streets and thre threatening vigilante action against the people in the camp. The businesses in the downtown core suffered from a loss of revenue as people avoided our downtown. BC Housing set up an emergency temporary housing for people in the camp, but the homeless people who weren't in the camp did not get the same access to this emergency housing. This emergency housing is only a band-aid, but it doesn't cover the whole wound. The homeless situation in my constituency is exacerbated by a lack of mental health and addiction services. We need help in Nanaimo Ladysmith. We need more purpose-built, affordable, energy-efficient housing. Developers and builders are not going to create low-income housing without incentives from the government. They are in business, and affordable rental units can't compete with margins of, of, of available for market housing. We could really use some cooperative housing in our community. Co-op housing is an excellent model for affordable housing. Co-ops are owned by the community and, and are not susceptible to real estate speculation, changing ownership or rent evictions. People pay a rent based on their income. If they start to earn more, they pay more. If people lose their jobs, they don't lose their homes. Seniors can age in place. The federal government needs to support co-op housing the way they did decades ago. The city of Nanaimo is struggling with this affordable housing crisis. I would like to know what the government can do now to help our community with this crisis. What emergency measures is the government prepared to take to help with this crisis right now? Not next year, not in two years or four years, but now. Secretary to the Minister of Social Development. Well, thank you. As I often say, it's always a good day. I guess I'll say it's a good night when we can discuss housing in this house uh, because there is no issue more important to me, more important to the residents that I represent, and in fact, more important to this government than making sure we get the housing system we need for this country. That's why today we passed historic legislation on the right to housing, the progressive realization in a systemic way of making sure that every Canadian has a place that's safe and secure and affordable to call home. But just building housing alone doesn't work. And as the member opposite has, quick, uh, has uh, accurately identified, uh, housing with supports is as critical a part of the process uh, as repairing housing is, as critical a part of the process as delivering uh, emergency responses to, to housing needs as it is to 
build long-term sustainable solutions. And our government has invested uh, close to $7 billion already, above and beyond what was forecast from the previous government, into new housing starts right across the country, and has put together what is now a $55 billion 10-year program to turn this country's housing situation around and make sure that Canadians from coast to coast to coast, most importantly Indigenous Canadians, and certainly Canadians in indigenous, uh, of Indigenous heritage in, in, in urban settings, get the housing they require. In British Columbia, uh, it's much like this, the, 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 the province that I come from in terms of the major city has had an explosion in housing starts, but at the same time, the market just hasn't provided for people with, with disabilities, the elderly, people on fixed incomes, as well as new Canadians who haven't quite got their feet underneath them as they make their way in, in this country. Uh, there are significant challenges all the way around, and people with disabilities, of course, are also on that list, as are people being discharged from hospital or from prison who get discharged into homelessness, which is part of the institutional uh, gapping that happens in this country and is part of what this country has to address systematically to make sure it, it puts an end to the flow into homelessness as we try to uh, deplete what, what is a, a, a horrible cohort of people uh, in terms of the circumstances they live in, uh, a horrible cohort that has to be addressed by ending homelessness. I've been to British Columbia. In fact, our government has now invested in 99 specific projects in, in its first uh, uh, three and a half years, 99 specific projects that run the full range of housing needs that need to be met in, 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 in British Columbia. In Campbell River, we opened uh, and broke ground on a, on, a, on a housing project to deal with people with developmental disabilities. In Nanaimo, in, in the Friendship Centre, I've discussed this project with, with my colleague opposite. It's one of the most beautiful and most energy efficient passive housing programs in the country run by a French Center uh, that has that has shown us and shown the rest of the country how to deliver not only good, strong, affordable community housing for youth coming out of care, for elders and, and, and the elders in the community, as well as for families, but to do it in such a way that actually came in under budget and is producing uh, remarkable results in terms of greenhouse gas uh, re reductions. Our investments in, in Victoria are going to bring Victoria to functional zero in terms of homelessness within two years. Modular housing we've invested in in Vancouver is dealing with people from tent cities and getting them into good, strong, uh, supportive housing programs that puts an end to their homelessness. This government is committed with its program. Uh, the money is being spent now as we speak. Uh, it, is, it is a 10-year program, so the math will tell you that, yes, some of it comes after the next election, and a lot of it comes after the next election because not only are we building new housing, and repairing new housing, but we're also subsidizing the housing to make it affordable. And if you add 1,000 units in Nanaimo this year and 1,000 next year and a year after that, your subsidy has to grow from 1,000 units to 2,000 to 3,000. And any party, and the NDP will do it quite often actually, that says you don't back end load housing programs has never run a housing system. We're proud of the national housing strategy. We're proud of the rights-based framework that we've put into legislation to make sure that no future government can ever back out of the housing program. And we're very proud of our results in British Columbia, working with a good, strong, provincial government that also understands how critical this is. We hope the parties in this House can support our investments because they're good, they're strong, and they're making a difference. Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Mr. Speaker, this is a crisis that didn't develop overnight. This is the result of years of budget cuts and neglect, and this is not something that is going to be fixed overnight. And I, I appreciate what the Honourable Member has said about the actions that the government is taking, but what we need now is, is emergency measures, and we need help with housing in, in Nanaimo and Ladysmith right now. We have people who are living on the streets. We have people who are vulnerable in our communities, and it's a shame. It's a national shame to have uh, people who are, are vulnerable living homeless in this country, in, with, with the country with so much wealth. So I would like to know what we can do to deal with this issue now, to get some modular housing into Nanaimo, to help these people who are in need, and to ensure that people have a good, secure place to live. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. British Columbia has led the way in evolving modular housing. We've supported the programs proposed by cities there, in particular the city of Vancouver and the city of, of, of Burnaby as well. And those investments have shown us a way to build modular housing, and I'd be happy to walk the member opposite through the program that gets us there. The other thing our government did upon taking office, beyond tripling transfers to provinces, which is a large part of where British Columbia is getting its dollars to build its housing, we also doubled the money for homelessness. And to put this into context, the, 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 the Conservatives were, were prepared to see that program lapse. 
the Green Party had no policy on it, and the NDP was only going to spend an extra $10 million on what is pr properly described as an emergency. We have put more than $2.2 billion into this program over the next 10 years. We've extended the number of designated communities. We created a separate, distinct Indigenous-based program for, for, for communities right across this country, a different rural strategy, and a strategy for the territories. We've also changed the rules of Housing First so that you can actually use it to prevent homelessness rather than just solve it after it's been on the street within your community for six months. And we've also stepped up to make sure that women... Order, order. The